Okay guys, I got a really cool thing to show you I'm working on today. Uh, like I mentioned in the last video, I want to install an acoustically transparent screen and increase the screen size substantially. Today was step one. I know this looks kind of ridiculous, but what we did, uh, my father, my brother, and myself, I went to Lowe's and I bought a painter's drop cloth, uh, which measures nine feet uh, tall by like 12 feet wide, I think, right here. Yep. And I bought a 12 foot uh, long two by four, cut it down to 11 feet, and we screwed that into the ceiling. And we came out a little bit further than where the actual uh, fake wall will come out. Um, came out about, I think it's 14 inches, uh, as is. But in reality, because we're gonna actually sink the speakers back, uh, these are 15 inches deep, and we're gonna actually sink these into the wall. You know, we've got the masonry block, then I've got two inch uh, Owens Corning XPS foam, or rigid foam, then we have the two x four framing. I wanna sink the speakers back into the wall as far as possible to make it so the the wall that we create comes out, you know, distance-wise as the least amount possible. Um, so what I did, so we got that done, which is great. That was step one. And I moved the speakers, obviously, just temporarily. Get them out of the way. And I moved the projector. Uh, we disconnected the projector. And I just ran it back here. Now, I know this looks really stupid, but uh, hear me out. I took my kitchen table from upstairs, uh, it's like a bistro table, and we put it on top of the subwoofer to give me the height that I needed, and I have it so when I take the arm mount, this one, and I relocate it back here into the masonry block the house is built from, um, if it's at full length, which this is, which I probably won't need in the future, but if it was at full length, um, the distance between the arm into the wall and the lens is 16 inches. I kept that mirrored as to what it was. So right now from the lens here to the screen, right now is 18 feet 6 inches. And then I put on some content earlier. Um, turned it on, I watched content that's in 16 by 9 uh, 1.85 to 1 and 2.35 to 1 um, at you know, filling up the entire display uh, with 2.35 content look great you know because it's not fatiguing in any way but when I put on 16 by 9 content there's so much visual space that your eyes are just kind of sucking in and if there's subtitles it makes it worse because your eyes are darting across this huge screen relative to the seating position um, anyway, I backed it down a bit, and I took some measurements. So the screen that's currently still hung on the wall, which I'll show you, I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can see it. That's the existing uh, high contrast screen. That screen measures 96 inches wide by 55 inches tall, with the the actual image that I threw onto this uh, painter's uh, canvas drop cloth where it looked really good with 16 by 9 and 2.35 content was at roughly 116 inches wide and 66 inches tall. Now I plugged those numbers into a calculator and I came out with a, at a almost exactly 135 inches diagonal at 16 by 9 ratio. Um, so that's perfect, actually. Um, Silver Ticket makes a 135-inch acoustically transparent screen. I can also try going a DIY approach. I'm not sure which I'm doing at the moment. Uh, but tomorrow, I am going to talk to Tom at uh, PSA and put the order in for the third PSA MTM 210T. So I'll have a third matching tower that'll go directly behind the screen. Um, one other thing to note... If you watched my last video, I talked about um, a lamp problem with the 2150. It's not specifically... well, it is a lamp problem, but to go into more specifics, I forgot to actually add this. 
So I've since I've owned the projector back in October, I've had the lamp or you know the projector in eco mode, uh, the full lamp brightness, you know, with the projector there and the screen on the wall, it was too bright most of the time in full lamp brightness. And depending on the setting you use, like cinema or bright cinema, dynamic, you know, putting that in full lamp power, it was overwhelming. It's insane actually how bright the projector is. But um, recently, the past few weeks or so, in eco mode, at low lamp power, the screen started to flicker. The lamp was flickering, um, you know, from like a high to a low power over and over. It's just intermittent. It's, it's extremely uh, distracting. It's hard to watch. It's almost migraine inducing. But as soon as you switch it to a high lamp power, problem gone. Interesting. So I did some research online. This is not specific to this projector. It is specific to a UHP uh, type bulb, which basically all projectors have or use, except your super high-end laser-based projectors. A lot of people that have Sony's and JVC's, uh, Optima, Epson, you name it, they unfortunately can be affected by that problem. So the past few weeks I've been using the projector in high lamp mode because it fixes the problem, but it creates other problems, which with this screen, this high contrast screen in a fully light controlled environment, you do get the best black levels. Unfortunately, there's other problems that happen. You get sparkle effect, uh, if anybody knows what I mean. Uh, there's a coating they put on that silver ticket high contrast screen, just like other screens that are less gain than 1.0, uh, where you get these sparkles when it's super bright. So if they pan to the sky and it's very bright, it's almost this dirty, sparkly effect. And some people don't see it. I definitely see it. And it kind of drives me crazy. The other effect is hot zoning or hot spotting. Um, if you're sitting dead center of the screen, the middle will be the brightest. And then off to the sides will be less bright. So moving to an acoustically transparent screen with a 1.1 gain, I move away from those two problems per se, but now the black levels will probably suffer. Now, a couple things have changed. The fact that the projectors at the back of the room with basically no zoom, um, it was basically max zoom here, but back here, there'll be pretty much no zoom used. So the contrast should improve slightly. But overall, I think the black levels will tank. Um, so where does that leave me? I think the answer is to upgrade to the Epson 5040. Um, but I know that this year, the, uh, they just had a sale. The prices were slashed to $22.99. And that sale ended yesterday, actually. Um, so, And that's supposedly to make room for new inventory that's coming out later this year. Whatever model replaces the 5040 UB. So there might be another sale. I might jump on it. I'm not sure. Uh, I had this projector on, and uh, it wasn't. It actually looked really good for having drop cloth <laughs> with a unknown gain, crazy textures. It was just to get a feeling for the screen size. Period. Um, so this week I want to work on getting these speakers mounted into the wall, recessed as much as possible, and then framing out a new wall. Probably with some drywall, some, some crown molding. I uh, won't affect the wall lights at all, the sconces, or the ceiling lights, which is great. But uh, I think this is much needed. It was a massive improvement having the screen so much larger and so, more, so much more immersive. And get the projector mounted on the same mount, but mount it back into the block the house is, uh, is resting on. So I think that's it for now, guys. I know uh, this kind of looks crazy. I totally get it. But uh, it's one step backwards for two steps forward. Until next time.